Welcome to the Matt O'Grady Coaching Podcast. This is where Matt shares all his ideas on how to be happier, more successful, and enjoy life to the fullest. Please go to mattogradycoaching.com and the livinggratitudebook.com to learn more and receive your free micro coaching session with Matt. Hello, welcome to the Matt O'Grady Coaching Podcast. As always, I'm going to dive right in to the topic at hand. And the topic at hand for me today is doing what you love. I'm not kidding. Doing what you love is one of the most overused cliches I've ever heard. But it's also completely true. And you're going to hear me be a little passionate today. You know, sometimes I come into these and I'm just... I usually meditate before a podcast, as I did today. And today's meditation lit a fire under me. You know, sometimes meditation really is just about, for me anyway, is just about relaxing as deeply as I can. Just whatever that is for me that day. For me, it's not about a perfect breath or mantra or specific steps about following meditation. I've been meditating for 20, over 20 years. I was introduced to meditation when I was 15 and didn't really practice it in any sort of significant and consistent way in my teens but you know maybe a a few dozen times over a couple years you know something like that and I was mostly doing visualization for uh, sports um, trying to get stronger and faster you know that kind of a thing so I love to meditate I love it so I find time for it every single day and that is no cliche it's just the truth Meditation has become such an important part of my life. Um, And so have all the other things that I really love. You know, there's things down the line, you know, like the 27th thing that I love, I, you know, probably doesn't get daily attention. It really doesn't. But uh, for anyone that knows me, they know that the most important thing to me is the people that I'm close to. So who I love the most and who love me the most. And so obviously right from the beginning starts with my wife and my son. You know, that's those are the two people I don't get enough t- quality time with. And um, so whenever we get the chance to do something like today was um, my six-year-old son uh, riding his bike for the first time without training wheels. And he's been putting it off. (laughs) You know, he's found a lot of other things to want to do uh, and hasn't wanted to do this. And he finally agreed today and he knew it and he seemed kind of excited about it, you know. And and we did have some really great moments, but he also had some frustrated moments and it was a little scary for him and a little stressful for him. But um, I think we uh, held a really nice balance of inspiring him to take the chance and also kind of letting him fail, you know, and and he did. He fell a couple times, got pissed, he cried, he yelled at me, I yelled at him, I loved him, I hugged him, you know, it was was one of those kind of days. And then, in addition to all the people that I love, therefore focus as much time as possible on them, you know, includes a lot of family members, including my parents and my brother and his family and my cousins and, um, you know, my friends who are like family. They all know who they are. And so it's like it, after the people, it's, it's, the, it's the things I love to do. Um, and a lot of times that is with people. But I'm also I'm one of those people who loves to be with people, socializing, family, friends, new people, whatever. And then I just want to be alone for hours. <laughs> That's just, you know, I'm a little bit old man. Um, it's just kind of how I was created. And uh, 
you know some people see it as like a lone wolf it's not I'm not trying to be a lone wolf I'm just kind of processing life I experience it and and find that I experience it even better with all the people that I uh, enjoy time with to also process what those relationships mean to me what the communication is and I need to do that alone I need to do that during meditation or during you know at least quiet chill time you know I don't necessarily need to be completely alone but maybe we're just both reading a book on the couch in the same room but we're just not speaking so we're together we're present with one another but not verbally speaking because then I can process I can settle in and not feel like I'm committed to a conversation at the moment another thing I love to do I love I love to have relaxed quiet time and I find that not necessarily specifically meditating but whenever I'm deeply relaxing it's pretty much like a meditation for me it's just a a moving meditation and maybe I have a generous definition of the word meditation but to me it falls into the same bucket because for decades I've been doing walking meditations I've been doing moving meditations I've been doing Qigong I've been doing sacred dance I've been doing thousands of classes of yoga and it's just like meditation does not have to be sitting on a mat in a lotus position with your eyes closed that's a type of meditation one of my favorites one that I aim to do every day um, and usually do even if sometimes some days are only a few minutes or a few minutes a few times a day so sometimes I don't get a 20 minute sit in you know it just just doesn't happen but what always happens is a few minutes here and there to just stop feel the life energy moving through me feel my body feel my emotions watch my thoughts and just see what's going on because I'm managing two businesses I'm trying to be as good a husband and as good a father as I can be while still working at least 50 hours a week and to be completely honest there's a lot of weeks there are 70 hour weeks and listen that is what it is maybe I work slow maybe I'm not that smart um, whatever it is <clears throat> it takes a lot of time <laughs> and attention and follow through and detail and management so um, even this podcast you know because I find myself with a very full life this podcast doesn't always get done although it is still my highest intention and uh, one that I visualize about just about every day to begin podcasting uh, once a day in fact I've even daydreamed let myself imagine what it would be like to do a few podcasts a day short ones you know but but just to just to check in just to be that virtual coach because I love to do it um, so I'm probably going to create a group program at some point in the next year uh, so that people can be in touch with me like that um, but anyway that is another love for me yet it's down on the list podcasting as much as I love it as much as I get great feedback on it just has not been able to make an everyday um, and sometimes not even every week appearance so podcasting for me I don't know what the exact number is but it's it's in that 20 range it's kind of down on the list I got other priorities that come before the podcast and um, but every time I do it, I love it. Every single time. So just so you know, whenever I record a podcast, I'm completely committed to it. Like I don't think, oh, I should get another piece of content out. You know, it's no. I, I need to be passionate about it. I may not communicate it passionately with my voice. I may just be you know, communicating it in a more kind of chill, kind of trying to just be present and awake to what I'm thinking and feeling and what my connection is, what my level of knowledge feels like it authentically is, and then I communicate about that. Um, I don't try to put myself out as the greatest teacher of anything. I'm just a guy who's working diligently at self-development. 
and uh, I've had my ups and downs with it over the last 20 plus years but I am dedicated to it and it is a part of a significant part of my daily life in some form or another every single day and that's been the case for well over a decade I just I don't miss a day of practice it just does not happen because whatever you want to call it self-development spiritual practice faith practice sacred practice sacred time awareness time whatever label you want to put on it it's this practice of going inside and seeing what's there attempting to love everything I see the whole way there and attempting to be as aware of everything about the experience that I can be and still feel sane as I'm doing it <laughs> because you know our levels of awareness are so deep and powerful I understand at least on some level of what my experience is of something that's eternal or infinite and because as you continue to explore the doors of perception if you will you realize that there really doesn't seem to be an end to it every time you focus your relaxed awakened attention on a certain situation relationship um, thought idea <clears throat> there's something powerful that that happens i'm not sure i'm able to describe all of it here on this podcast but it's enough that it's a really important love of mine and so I focus on it every single day because it's been so rewarding to me to just explore that and have that be whatever it is not say <clears throat> you know I'm nothing against people that speak to angels but I don't speak to angels unless I just decide I'm going to speak to them I don't see them I've had certain experiences that you know many hundreds of experience through life that have made me feel like huh there's something else going on here than just like I need to succeed professionally and be a halfway decent guy and the world will accept me and everything's gonna be okay you know that that's that's okay or you know donate a certain amount of time per month to an organization or, or um, you know some sort of giving back effort I've done that I've done thousands of hours of that and it's tremendous it's great I, I love doing it however <clears throat> there are rewards to contempl um, contemplative excuse me uh, contemplative time where you just sit back and watch what your experiences of life and that can be across the board your senses your thoughts your emotions your ideas your imagination your desires your interests your passions whatever kind of floats through you can do it that way or you can direct your attention very specifically on some subject whether that's peace or love or a mantra or a mandala or a picture or the sun or the clouds or your body or the earth or the universe or all the different thousands of things that someone can put their attention on some people are just watching the breath some people are just counting some people are just noticing the senses some people are just listening uh, they're listening to music or they're listening to nature i mean there's literally tens of thousands of ways to meditate to be aware to have a self-development practice to have a spiritual practice sacred time but whatever you call that, I think, is the best time of the day. It really is because, for me, it fuels deeper connection to the people that I love most. And they are the priority in my life. And therefore, I get to experience something that is so rewarding that I want to do it over and over and over. And it doesn't mean that things are always comfortable. You know, I don't get along with everybody. I argue. I get in, you know, tiffs or I get frustrated. I mean, you know, I'm a human being, right? But I don't always act on those emotions. Sometimes I just watch them move through me like a cloud, right? That's another cliche, like, oh, your thoughts are like a cloud. But the emotions that come with it, too, and just letting those emotions and those thoughts just pass through and aiming to be peaceful or relaxed or forgiving or whatever you want to call it another practice that I find tremendously rewarding 
So I aim to do it every day. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. I don't. That is something. I, I am not always forgiving all day long, every day. It's just, I'm just not there. <laughs> I, I hope to be. Um, and I aim to be. And I understand that that would be a very freeing thing. Because, you know, then you're just without attachments. And you're just more free, right? It doesn't mean you can't love and be happy and enjoy life. But you can also be free of some of the things that don't feel as good, right? Like any sort of guilt or um, resentment or, you know, holding a grudge against someone or feeling helpless or feeling lost or feeling scared or doubting or, you know, whatever. Like all those different types of ways that we feel that don't feel good. So um, I share all of this to get off my chest if you will. And I'm really trying to hold back my passion because I kind of want to scream right now. Um, I don't know if you can hear that in my voice, but I do because I want to say, if you're listening to this, maybe, just maybe, this is really important information for you. So I'll, I'll say it that way instead of screaming. <laughs> but that is how I feel. My heart is just <clears throat> beating strongly in my chest and my mouth feeling very alive, very awake, very connected, very, very loving, just full of passion and being so grateful that I get to talk about this, even though if I could choose it, when I was talking, I would probably be talking some aspect of this, which I hope is going to be the next evolution of my life that's what i'm intending that's what i'm seeing for my life because i see many tens of thousands millions of people talking about what they think on this topic and um that's great because i've learned from so many of them and i've also listened to lots of things i haven't enjoyed um but i've tried many thousands of different you know things to learn in this in this arena and just like all things right some some things appeal to me and some things do not or some things appeal to me and then over time months or years they fall away as part of my daily practice but uh, doesn't mean those things weren't very valuable for the amount of time that I spent with them or that I didn't spend with them because sometimes I come back to something. Uh, the Abraham teaching is like that. Like I was introduced to the Abraham teaching in the late 90s. And I got a lot from it. I, I did, you know, I listened. But it wasn't as readily available. Um, and uh, so I got some gems of wisdom, really planted seeds in me and became parts of my practice. But I didn't necessarily think about Abraham or the teaching all that much. I just brought the wisdom with me. Um, uh, you know, like the simple thing of focusing on what you like, you know, I'm like, okay, that sounds like really good information. <laughs> I'm going to do that as much as possible. Um, and that's part of the inspiration for today, talking about being sure to be focused every day as much as possible on the things that you love to do. And that could be, or being with the people that you love, like for me, that's, that's what that is. It's not necessarily the, the exact same people every day. I am a Gemini. Um, I, li I like to interact with lots of different people, um, as a lot of us do. That's not for, for everybody. But then there's also kind of like the close inner circle of the people that I you know, communicate with every day and every week. Um, and, uh, and then there's some people that are still, I consider like my, my, bestest friend in the world, my, my soul sister and my soul brother, and I may not have spoken to them in a year, but we get on the phone, we talk for an hour straight, and we're like, damn, that was a good conversation. <laughs> um, and so, and that's something I love to do, but guess what? It doesn't happen every day just because it doesn't need to. <laughs> and we just kind of naturally come together and communicate when it makes sense. Like my friend Jack, a little shout out to my buddy Jack. I just spent time with him, uh, uh, with uh, my other bestest buddy in the whole wide world, Annie. And uh, we were in uh, upstate New York. Uh, we just spent a couple days 
hanging out, meditating, chanting, having amazing, organic, healthy, delicious meals um, by a house near a river. Um, and then we also went on these short, it's like a super short hike to this watering hole with this ice cold water and these beautiful waterfalls and just like kind of like a cool hangout spot, um, which I absolutely love to get to um, every time I can, every time I'm in the area. It's just such a beautiful spot uh, on the planet. And um, we, we haven't seen each other together in like a decade, <laughs> maybe longer. Um, I, I honestly don't know offhand. Um, they've seen each other and I've seen them, but we haven't all seen each other together in a really long time. Um, oh, maybe my wedding 11 years ago. <laughs> maybe that's when it was. Yeah. So anyway, um, but we get together and it's like talk, like I literally talked to them yesterday. It's just filling in the details. We're already so close and so connected and so loving towards one another. It's so easy. You just, you're just hanging out. Not a worry in the world. Not a, a, a thing to concern ourselves with. And they both are tremendous spiritual teachers and practitioners in their own right. And I've been blessed to have been mentored by both of them uh, multiple times in multiple situations over periods of years. Just what they've given to my life and my friendship can't even be defined. It's I cannot put it into words, but it is some of the most precious time and friendships that I've ever experienced in my whole entire life. And whether they feel that way or not doesn't even matter to me. It really doesn't. I hope that they've enjoyed uh, their time with me too, and I'm pretty sure that they have uh, because they've expressed as such. But completely unattached to that, they've given me so much, and I'm like brought to tears. You could probably hear it in my voice. Just my love for them is absolute. And so, with with friendships like that connections like that my life is just so full and the love doesn't have to be every day because it feels like it's already spanning you know kind of moving into that infinite eternal space yeah and so you know I share that um, because it means the world to me but guess what I don't see them or talk to them every day in fact, I go months or years without seeing them, um, or sometimes even speaking to them. But however we reconnect, whether it's text, leaving each other voicemails, uh, phone call, hanging out in person, Skype, whatever, that connection is instantly alive. And it's a beautiful thing to behold. And I hope that anyone would have relationships and friendships and connections like that because they're uh, irreplaceable. I have them with multiple family members too, thank God. And it's it's the best. It's the best. Those those relationships for me are the best thing in life. And I've even begun to include the relationship with myself in that same space as a uh, a self-love practice, if you will, you know, which is a self-awareness practice. I do a lot of forgiving of myself because I'm, as anyone who knows me, I'm, I'm pretty far from perfect. I fuck up all the time. I'm just, you know, far from perfect. I am no saint, as I've said probably <laughs> thousands of times. I don't know if I should admit that, but it's the truth. I'm, I'm no saint, but... I'm doing something and it creates a tremendous amount of love and beauty in my life. And if there's any way I can share that with people and uh, give that gift to as many people as possible, I'm, that's what I want to do. That's what I'm inspired to do. That's what I aim to do. That's what, thankfully, many people who have listened to my podcast or read my book or worked with me or gotten to know me as a friend 
most of them, certainly not all, think, think I'm on to something here with this practice. But um, the on to something is very subjective. You know, um, there are many tens of thousands, millions of ways to practice a connection with yourself, an awareness practice, a meditation practice, a self-development practice, a spiritual practice. Once again, whatever you want to call it, whatever label that is, there's so many different ways to do it. And I highly recommend not exploring only one way. Hey, that's just me, but I've looked into thousands of things and the hundreds of things that I've found that really interest me is like still mountains of information I am probably never going to get into because I just don't have the time. I mean, you know, somehow I retire early and I can just read spiritual self-development stuff all day and study it all day and practice it all day and travel the world and study with all the most amazing teachers that are willing to have me. Um, that's what I would do all day. I would want to do it with my family and my closest friends because those are my peeps. Um, but even if they don't want to do that stuff with me, um, I can I can come back quick. I can take just like long weekends or something. <laughs> um, you know, I I I think when you when you authentically and truthfully and consistently follow what you love. The appearances, the external parts of life, including my body, you know, listen, I'm not in perfect health. I'm overweight. I don't work out as much as I like. I, I don't eat everything completely healthy all the time. I succumb to my love of French fries. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, listen, I'm, I'm far from perfect. Far from it. But so what? But so what? Right? Are you perfect? I don't know. Maybe you are but I bet you're not. <laughs> and I also bet um, that you'll feel so much better if you're kind to yourself on a daily basis. And it doesn't mean not to push yourself. Expand. Go for what you want. Work hard at your job. Work hard at your important relationships, you know, to really give yourself to the things that you think are important that you love, right? Because if the things that are important to us are also the things that we love, Woohoo! Man, when that stuff lines up, right? Man, then we're just in our sweet spot. We're happy. We're feeling good. And things don't always go smoothly, right? You know, there's still going to, you know, be things that happen that are uncomfortable, that just have to do with change. You know, our bodies, our relationships, our lives change. That's just a lot of times people say, oh, this is wrong. That's terrible. You know, well, yeah, I'm sure it feels terrible. I mean, I don't doubt that. But it's just change. I mean, life is always changing. Our bodies are always changing. Our relationships are always changing. And as soon as we embrace that, be more in the flow with the changes of life, we're just a little bit less shocked by it all. It just is what it is. And you find ways to relax around it as much as possible so that you can move forward. It doesn't mean you're not going to have tears and it doesn't mean that, you know, tough things, bad things are going to happen, right? Quote, unquote, it's going to feel bad. You know, when we miss someone that we love that isn't with us anymore, whether they, they have died or whether they're just not in our relationship or we don't work with them anymore, whatever the case is, right? Or we're still in a relationship with the person, but the relationship used to be more fun or easier or have more passion or have more love or be healthier or be more balanced or whatever it is. But I'm here to tell you, sometimes your relationships can get out of balance and then back in balance. And I've had that with friends, with lovers, and I've had it with, you know, multiple girlfriends and a wife. Life changes. So that's just, that's just the truth of it, right? Man. Every moment is a, is a small, subtle shift of change. And sometimes our lives change in a moment. It's just the truth, right? I'm not trying to be a fear monger here. It's just the absolute truth of life. It's impermanent and always changing. And sometimes it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Life is going to hurt. But that doesn't mean that your life stinks or it's over or... You can't go on, because you probably can. I'm, in fact, quite...
quite sure you can. It just may take some time. But you've got to work at it. You've got to focus on it. You've got to intend to get better, feel better, aim for life feeling better. Feeling better is really important. Another thing I love, I love to feel better. <laughs> so uh, I'm far from a perfect um, vision of health, as I've shared uh, just a few minutes ago. But I've also had all sorts of crappy uh, health things and bounce back from them. Um, like really painful stuff, like things that I won't even go into it because I don't have to show you my medical records. But take my word for it. I've had some pain. Quite a bit of it has been, you know, situations I'm completely responsible for, putting myself in the, you know, situation to be, you know, in pain. Um, but you can also come back from things that are painful, right? That another cliche, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger if we allow it to, right? Or eventually it makes us stronger. Maybe it's not even stronger in body, but in mind. And, and what does that equal to a life? A lot. Learning how to recover from pain, from tragedy, from loss, it's, it's an acquired skill. <laughs> you can know it intellectually. If you're not hit with it, you have no idea what you're talking about. And then when you're hit with it, then you do. Because you've experienced it, right? Like most things in life. You can read about it as much as you want. Life experience is what really teaches us. People can tell us. We can even listen to them. We can listen to the words. We can even be emotionally charged by what they're saying and really care about it and make daydream about it or write books about it or whatever. But until we experience it, good, bad, or in between, we don't really know it. You know. So get out there and get in there inside you and figure out, find out, become aware, or just remember what you love and do it. Do not wait. You have the two minutes. It only takes two minutes. You can do something. Take some sort of minuscule step toward what you love, toward who you love. Do you need to forgive someone? Do you need to let someone know you've forgiven them? Do you want to love someone more? Do you want a better connection with someone? Well, aim for it. Go for it. You want to be kinder to someone? Be kinder to them. <laughs> I don't think there's any reason not to be. Even if it's your worst enemy or nightmare. Kindness is a superpower. Other thing I love. I love to be kind. You know, it's uh, I'm not always kind. <laughs> Even on these podcasts sometimes I'm not always kind of like matter of fact. Um... But that's just how I am sometimes. Guess what? I'm not always Mr. Compassion, you know. But I aim to be. <laughs> and I love to be when I am in that space and it feels authentic. It's great. But it's something I have to aim for and then kind of follow. And then I can be in that space. And then I don't always just stay in that space automatically. It's a practice. I need to uh, intend it and then follow that path. I aim for it. Sometimes it's a moving target in life all the things that we want can be right I love you thank you for listening to this I appreciate you and I hope you enjoy this podcast if you do um, please share it or let someone know about it or just listen again because <laughs> I've got hundreds of these and uh, or let me know what you think about it because even a one liner makes my day and uh I hear from so many of you and it means the world to me. Um, so thank you for listening and uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Take good care, would you? Come on. <laughs> Take good care of yourself. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>